there's no walls or yeah. or borders and barriers in terms of how we're thinking about creating stuff and like everyone is dealing with the same kind of value system of we want to definitely break open whatever rules and regulations are around how to create sound and how to create music and just do the things that are interesting. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? It's the five foot seven assassin in the podcast business. I am your host, Rohan Patra, the rap music plug at your service. Here we are again. When thinking about today's guest, it reminds me of that famous Shakespearean saying, what's in a name? Because for certain artists, their name can be completely meaningless, having no bearing on the kind of music they make, or has no insightful backstory even for how the name came about. Hell, prime example is Charles Gambino, the name for Donald Glover, who infamously got said name through a Wu-Tang name generator. But for today's guest, Uxie, their name actually says a whole lot about their art and what they stand for. Uxie means axe in Danish, which is also ash. Pardon me if I'm mispronouncing that word. And that ash means the life force that runs through all things living and inanimate. It's a current or flow, a groove that initiates can channel so that it carries them along their road in life. This beautifully symbolic name perfectly encapsulate what makes this experimental jazz group so damn great because throughout their self-titled debut album released on Backwood Studios, there's a special energy that is bottled up on each track that makes the listening experience truly invigorating. Uxay is a four-person group comprised of NYC-based drummer Savannah Harris, Danish saxophonist Mete Rasmussen, Haitian electronic musician Val Genti, and Swede Peter Eld on bass, synths, and sampler. So this worldwide supergroup of musicians brought their specific influences to the table, creating a musical vision that defies any and all convention. So with me today is three of those four bandmates in Savannah, Mete, and Peter, along with Dash Lewis, talented writer for the likes of Pitchfork, Hip Hop DX, Passion Weiss, who is once again here to help co-host this interview, as he did in the last episode. And just like that last episode, this is a conversation you simply cannot miss. Because we dive into the intriguing backstory behind the band's formation, that artistic North Star of theirs, the Backwood Studios connection, and their unique approach to blending avant-garde jazz with hip-hop on their fantastic new album, which is absolutely one of the best records of the year. The Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV is the remedy to the I don't have anything good to listen to problem. Through in-depth artist interviews, album reviews, and general rap commentary on the best that the underground rap scene has to offer, this is your one-stop shop to knowing what to add to your queue, play next, or pop into your record player. Welcome to the show. Okse, how are you guys doing today? Great. Yes. Great. Really, really happy that you guys could make this work. Uh, so I know we're down one member, Val, but that's that's totally okay. Three or four is more than enough. Uh, and I just feel like this is such a special, special album. And it, it like honestly, obviously, I do these interviews. Everybody I've had on, I can promise you, I very much enjoy their music. But there are specific cases where I don't just enjoy the music. I'm so damn curious to understand more about you more about the all the approach because it's just i was just not as familiar plain and simple so i'm just really excited on a personal level to be able to be doing this so thank you so much thank you and yeah. uh with that i'm also joined with a very talented journalist dash lewis who actually did a co-host with the last interview we did with the uh, young webster it went so well made sense to do a round two especially since I know Dash has a really nice understanding of jazz and is a really big fan of this album. So Dash, why don't you take it away? Hey, how's it going, y'all? I'm Dash. Uh, I'm a contributor at um, place, publications like Pitchfork and Bandcamp, um, The Guardian, a bunch of other places. Um, I was really blown away by this record and have been really excited to talk to people about it. Um, 
And when Ro asked if I wanted to be a part of this, I jumped on it. So I'm really excited to talk to you all about this record today. And thank you for making it. Thank you. You know, let's let's get right into it with uh, a very unique aspect of this uh, of of this of your group, which is that, you know, right off the bat, you all come from very different parts of the world, and so I'm very curious to understand how you all connected first, and then what ended up being that key inspiration to join forces and form this band. Meta was uh, commissioned by South Eldon Jazz Festival in Austria. Uh, to create a new piece um, and uh, reached out to me to collaborate with her, um, which was such a special treat. We never met before. And um, our first <laughs> conversation like this, you know, <laughs> online was so sweet and super connected. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing exactly, we were just giggling. Yeah, like, the whole time. Away like that, the whole time. Like, we never met and this is like giggling. Yeah. yeah. Sure and um, thinking about like friends and people we really admire and respect their sound and what they're able to bring to any project, we realized quickly that we have our very brilliant friend Petter Eld in common and that it would be really cool to, <laughs> to collaborate with him on this um, because uh, Petter is able to take music in any direction that you want to go. Um, I think we were really interested in, in not dictating what the direction needed to be or what the sound needed to be before actually getting together and making, making some music. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Cause that, that's what, I mean, we can, we'll get into it in a lot more depth later, but it's just fascinating to even understand the impetus of what you guys had as a vision, because this is just very singular. It's very rare that you can listen to a, a piece of music and be like, I don't really understand the template. There's not really a blueprint out there. Where I'm like, oh, they're doing what X artist did or this group did. So um, that's 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 really interesting. And I understand it's a pretty fascinating story as well about how you connected with Backwoods. Um, so could you elaborate on how you connected with a primarily hip hop based group, but obviously their whole kind of ethos is experimental music. So yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah, I uh, I mean, I think one one good thing to get uh, a point to come across is that we, we're a band that kind of developed a lot through working in the studio. Um, like we've been in the studio quite a lot. And, uh, and I think uh, in between all that studio work, I, I run into Billy Woods at a festival. We're both playing the same stage. And, uh, I mean, he hears me play and, and, um, uh, and he's, he, we get talking and he asked me to send him some, some tracks, um, for, I guess for sampling and, and, uh, a couple of weeks after that, I'm working with Petter on the extra stuff in the studio, in, in his studio in Berlin. And I send Woods uh, a track, which he's like, he's really into it. And then it kind of just uh, snowballs from there or it develops from there. Like uh, the first thing is that um, we invite Woods to join as a, a feature on one of the songs. And um, yeah, he comes to Trondheim to do that. Like I book a studio in Trondheim and I go to pick him up at the airport and I miss I guess, I mean, his whole lyrics are based around that experience, those 24 hours in Trondheim. And I think at that point, we were not signed to Backwoods, but it, yeah, it happened uh, pretty organically. And I think there was just a lot of like energy. It's always been that with this band, it's always just been like this energy um, going together and just going forward pretty natural. Everything just happens pretty natural. Um, yeah, so I think joining the Backwoods uh, um, label and recording with Willie Green uh, leads to uh, inviting more MCs from Backwoods onto the record. And that also has uh, a great effect on the whole music. Um, mm -hmm. But also I think uh, I remember Savannah saying after a show once that um, 
like imagine that we're all sitting here and like you grew up in Denmark, I grew up there. We all grew up different places and now we're sitting at the exact same table and we have a band together. Uh, I, that was just like, you know, that some, sometimes your friend says one thing and your mind kind of explodes. <laughs> at, at that moment in time, I just felt that there were so many starting points of what you do all the time. Uh, like like the starting points, different different uh, times in your life that lead you to create a band, that leads you onto a label, that leads you to the music, creating the music together and the vibe of the music. And I think through time, there's all these different starting points happening. That's beautifully said. And what specifically about Backwoods did they did ended up feeling like they were the right partner to release this debut? Like, what do you appreciate about what the label has done so far in their, you know, through their catalog of releases? I mean, for me, it was obviously I, I couldn't see, I couldn't see that being, being the end, end of like the whole journey that started in this, at this festival in Saalfeld and we got together, just the four of us creating like an instrumental program and then uh, actually we we recorded it there there's so many stories with this band we recorded that we could come back to that but that was just like after playing the show in south and at this uh festival we went into the studio and like at the end of the day that those recordings kind of like we were actually listening back to a song being kind of like you know high-fiving just being kind of <laughs> like yes this is happening and then <laughs> The, com the the whole computer fried. No. And this, yeah, yeah. So the 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 sound person, the whole he album. was like, he was just like, he didn't know. It was like, okay, he just needs a reboot, and then we'll yeah, start up the session again. But it was just like lost. Uh, and I mean, yeah. I don't even know the ins and outs. He tried to kind of like recover these files for a year, probably. But it was just like never happened i think he invested a lot of his own money to actually take it to different people to come try to revive these files but they're out there somewhere but it was still like one of these steps that was just like important because it was like the studio process and then we realized that okay well next time we meet next festival next time we play we need to kind of like book a studio again so that's that was like when that whole studio process started happening and uh and i i guess I mean, in there somewhere, I mean, we kind of like put all our influences into this thing. And I mean, I brought the MPC along. We have Val with all of the samples that she brought and and every all the influences we have from from all over the place was was already in there. Um, and then, I mean, one of my kind of like in my record collection, I, I actually like one of my most beloved pieces is is the e e Ethiopes album of Billy Woods. So, and I'm not even gonna tell you what I paid for it, but I'm actually one of the <laughs> one of the people that list. I I listen to that shit. I don't keep it in the you know seal. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and, I, I respect and, and, it. And resell it on Discogs later. So it's like I'm actually I'm wearing I'm wearing I'm wearing that shit out. So I, I'm gonna I'm eventually gonna buy another expensive copy of that album. <laughs> It's such a great record. That record yeah, is insane. That's insane record. That record is Absolutely insane. amazing. So that's been, you know, uh, like the, the backwards approach. Um, I mean, I'm really like a lot of the producers, a lot of the MPs on the album, they've been very influential. Uh, I mean, to me and, and, and just like, it's, it's just such a tour de force right now and in music. So uh, when Meta then just told me that I was like, "Hey, uh, I I connected last week. I met Billy Woods at this festival." And I was like, "I was like, oh god, that's crazy." And it's like, you know, that's just, <laughs> that, that's just that's just a fun story. That's just a fun crazy meeting." And I was like, didn't think more about that. And we were sitting tinkering with the EXO stuff, and then eventually Meta says like, "Oh, it's like I'm I'm actually, I'm 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 just writing to Woods now." It's like. Maybe we should just send him something. And that's like, that was like, just like this. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? Really? It's like, what? Send him some of this stuff? And it's like, I'm just like, okay, it's like, I'm just going to crank the snare. I'm going to go. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. It's like, okay, I'm just going to adjust it slightly. Oh. And then I think we sent him, we sent him that track, right? The the one he yeah. ended up. Yeah. yeah. The, the one he ended up on was the, the first one year. Yeah. And the crazy is, part was yeah. I wasn't even supposed to be playing that festival. Like Deerhoof was supposed to be playing, but the bass player broke her arm. So they called me a month before asking if I wanted to come and do a, a solo. That's also so, crazy to be. I know. Filling it, filling in for a deer hoof. Yeah. yeah. To meet to meet Billy Woods. <laughs> yeah. That's <Exactly>. wild. <laughs> yeah. It was and also, also the promoter going like, oh, deer hoof band. Let's get a solo saxophone. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not really understanding the connection here, but that's great. I'm glad it happened. <laughs> I think it just kind of speaks to like the range of possibility within music because a lot of times we're thinking about you know how to categorize this with this what's what you know what music is like this or what can be kind of connected and ultimately I think when you I think one of the beautiful things about this group is like when you bring four people together that have a really vast um array of sounds and things that they're influenced by and like creating it's just all music like it's it's not you know there's like no um there's no there's no walls or yeah. or borders and barriers in terms of how we're thinking about creating stuff and like cavalier is like i feel like i heard cav with iman omari i heard cav with Quelle chris um, Masai is one of the homegirls from Brooklyn. Like she makes incredible music with oh, J yeah. words. They have a duo called air. Like, yeah, they've been on thing. the show. They're, 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 yeah, they're like they're, the, you know, the new Vanguard real, real. Absolutely. Soon. You already know. So it's like, they, I mean, they're, they're doing stuff with what we traditionally think of as like modular synth production or like rap as to they're like, they're cre it, 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 I think I think it's really just everyone is dealing with the same kind of value system of we want to definitely break open whatever rules and regulations are around how to create sound and how to create music and just do the things that are interesting to us. Um, and obviously with Woods and Elucid, it's like we're all listening to them. They're incredible. I mean, they're everyone's favorite rapper's favorite rapper as those guys you know so it's like it's it's an honor to to be able to work with them but also i feel like they also have that same value system so i think it's, it works you know i i find it fascinating that you're so globally spread out and yet the music you make together is feels so singular um you all are clearly like you have kind of storied solo careers, you're, you are adept at collaboration. Um, but I'm curious, and oh, and you also said that so much of this was developed by working together in the studio, the energy felt really natural and you were looking at the sort of range of possibility of sound. And I'm curious if there was any sort of like philosophical or spiritual even kind of like guiding light as you got together in the studio that you were chasing or you were that something that was sort of like a compositional North Star that you wanted to hold on to as you were making this work? I actually think that it's, that wasn't a one thing. I think it's the, it's the combination of the four of us. It's like a potion that becomes, uh, it's like all of us uh, bringing some aspect to the table and, and then that together. Uh, just kind of elevates into the band. I think when, when me and Savannah met the first time in New York to uh, write for the band, uh, we were jamming out and going back, listening back to certain stuff that stood out and, uh, you know, transcribing that and reworking it into tunes for the band. And we also met up with uh, Val uh, who brought different samples and we had different samples from Petter. Uh, so we were working in a studio for a day on, on stuff, stuff on, on different stuff. And also in that first meeting with, with uh, Val, one thing that stuck with me was that, I mean, she brought, brought in a lot of different Haitian samples and she was like, it would be great that 
also if you could bring different samples from different like parts of your um, uh, diff your different parts of the world how, where you grew up and and that stuck with me and that same summer like I think that same month I was playing a festival in Sweden where I met Torgai Vasvik and um, so he's a Samic artist and like uh, native people of Norway and we connected and later on I asked him to do would you would you feel comfortable about doing some samples for us to use in this band Oxe? And he actually looks up Val and he totally links with what Val is doing and he has friends who's working with the Val. Um, so he sent me like, I think 12, 13, 14 different uh, samples that he recorded. And a lot of the heavy, heavy breathing you hear on some of the tracks are, are his uh, samples. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a nice touch. Yeah um so i think this that, that that's one aspect of it uh and, and also yeah i don't know that's i think it's what we all bring to the table like uh, different corners of the world and a bit different uh, fields of music and and then in the same way we all also have this like core of uh core that's kind of just going forward like the last track of the album onwards it's like forward we go yeah yeah so i it's you were saying that the some of these got started with uh meta with you and savannah kind of jamming out and then whittling those things down how did those arrangements how did the band flesh them out in the studio what was the studio what were the studio sessions like like how was the what was the recording process itself like as as the entire band? The first moment for us was, um, you know, we'd, we'd written some charts out, actually. We'd kind of put a lot of these ideas on paper, mm. sent them out. And so there was, I mean, I think what's interesting about this is even in the process of jamming out, it was all freely improvised stuff. We found the ideas that really worked and could be flushed out into something. We combined that with, um, material that Petter had recorded, ideas he had recorded at home, given to us, and the same with Val. And so there was already already a sense of how we of directions we were going to maybe try to go. We were sending stuff back and forth. You know, we were sent. Me and Meta were sending to Petter what we were doing, what we were improvising over his you know sounds that he had given us, and back and forth with Val as well. So there was, it was starting to congeal. The sound of it was starting to congeal before we got together. Then we got together and we played it all live. And the energy of that performance and the audience feedback, it was a large audience. There was a lot of feedback. If something was really connected in that moment. Yeah. Um, Meta had just gotten done playing with Jason Moran and like all these different, there was just like a crazy energy that year in that festival and something was yes. swirling. So when we got to playing, it was like, it kind of shaped itself. There were some, at least to me, there was a way in which it kind of felt like it shaped itself and it was something we wanted to capture. And from there in the studio, it's just been a process of kind of refining that energy, but like Meta said, there's something that happens when the four of us get together. And I think that's our, that's what we're aiming for. There's some kind of connectivity. There's some like openness in how ideas are flowing. And I yeah. think it's because we all have a background in creative music and improvised music. And I think yeah. that's why there's a lot of ease around how things move and how things are shaped. Most of it is nonverbal because we're used to you know, we're used to working like that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the backline crew? So I mean, at, at the South Film? At no, our what show? They yeah, yeah, no, at our show, like they all- They were geeked, chairs. right? Yeah, they, they were geeked, up, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but they put up chairs, like the whole backline crew put up chairs oh at the, on the stage, on the side and watched the entire show. And know, watched the, the whole from, show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. They were so It was so such sweet. a great vibe. So we Shout had out them to them. Yeah. That's awesome. Such a great vibe. Yeah. No, that's really cool to hear you guys put that together. That was exactly what I was curious about, was like the degree of improvisation versus 
some plan, which that chart is a really interesting concept. And then the, the post-production stuff. Cause like, I, I really do find it really cool how this album obviously is blending so many different influences together, but I've never heard like in my experience, I've never heard like the kind of hip hop scratching type things that I think I imagine would that be you, Petter, that's doing the the kind of I don't know if that's scratching, but it's like the always the like the manipulations of all the sounds, the samples and all of that, that would be you. No, that that's that's all Val. That's Val. Okay. That's that's Val. all Val because she's she's actually on the on the turntables like that. Yeah. Constantly kind of like I mean, so so basically, I mean, it was amazing to kind of like send it used to kind of like when you were in New York and I sent some of those initial kind of like tracks that that you kept building on, some of that was like basically just double bass loops in 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 different ways. And it was so amazing when we actually finally met up all of us together. It was like Val already had them on the, you know, she had them on her system on the turntable. She, she's also adding so much with the like percussive, like the digital kind of like a conga and like that that electronic percussion side of things. But so it's, it's that it's that station plus the two turntables basically. But it was so amazing because then she has started one of those loops. And I I I kind of like I hadn't really heard it since I sent it off. And then it was just blasting out of these speakers. And and Savannah Mette just jumped on it. Just like started playing with it. And it's like like I'm not doing anything right now. But I'm still <laughs> I'm still part of it. And that was just such, that was such a liberating thing as well because that's when I kind of couldn't okay, I could just like I put the double bass down and I just looked at my SP and I was kind of like, oh, well, I need to find some extra sounds here. So it was like it was all those all those different layers that was just like all of a sudden a, a possibility and a potential to kind of like actually having, you know, a Val being a part of the percussive element, but also being the bass player and me actually being kind of like liberated to kind of like, oh, yes, I'm just going to find some additional samples to put in here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to you know, sample meta. And then all of a sudden we're doing like a, a unison line that I'm playing on the SP. So that's actually chopped up meta. So I'm, I'm also being the sax player. So it's kind of like this, all these sonic possibilities that are just kind of like interwoven. And then it's like the next track, then I'm on the double bass again. And then, you know, Val is doing more of this, like she has some other samples and scratching that filtering, you know, manipulating that in real time constantly as well. And I love that kind of like she's so like constantly shaping the sounds yeah. to, to kind of like go along with whatever we're doing as a as a kind of like a live unit playing our instruments. Uh, and and so it's like all of those possibilities uh, are in there. And I think that's that's really one of the unique things we have as a live outfit as well. But I mean. It's, it's seamless. It's seamless. It's studio and live. It's kind of like all those things happen uh, in both those places. Yeah, um, I think you're you're touching exactly on what I feel makes it special because it's that mixture of of sound, like it influences. Yes, but it's it's also studio and live because like like I was saying, I just I haven't heard I haven't heard manipulation that feels very like hip hop esque, feels very like electronic music based esque mixed in with all of the instrumentation that you guys are performing live it's just like nothing i've ever heard and i wonder was that kind of like a another kind of like a, once you started to maybe put the pieces together was that something you were going for to have like to have a listening experience that challenged the boundaries of mixing these two kind of previously separate worlds of live music of studio manipulations together I think I think actually a, a track that's a really good example of, uh, on that is uh, fragrance, because fragrance uh, what was like I, I felt we needed one more tune when we met up in Southam, so I wrote that before going there, uh, which was inspired. I mean, the, it's just a theme that keeps repeating, and I mean it's inspired by Braxton and Roscoe Mitchell, like having this big leaps and just going uh, around and around and. When we played that first time, 
it was just, just that and then improvisation. Uh, but then I think one of the first time I hit, we recorded, and then the first time I, I come to your studio, Peter, maybe you could talk a bit about that. You made it into something completely different, which was, mm -hmm. I loved it. Like, I think that's one of my favorite uh, tracks, uh, but that, I don't know, maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I guess that that's really that thing of like, it's it's similar to that process that you initially had uh, um, in New York when you were just jamming and then you just kind of like, you find, you know, small cells, small whatever, and then you kind of like refine that or you take that and you build on that. I think it was that process that kept kind of like actually happening because we had those recordings from the studio and then that was, you know, it was just that thing of like, actually, I and mean, I love doing that being being in a band or having like some of my own recordings and treating that as as if I would just sample, you know, like an old record or whatever. So it was really that process coming in and just chopping up the extra recordings that we had and then kind of creating, you know, a new world within the same song. So I was sampling that same song, but creating like a new beat from those recordings and then it's like interjecting that into this kind of like more kind of like yeah open thing uh so, so yeah i think i think that's that that was like also such a liberating thing to be able to actually do that to kind of like just take it before it's on a record and and then i get it back now i can do that with some other piece because now I actually have the extra vinyl. So I, I'm sure mm -hmm. at some point I'll repurpose that those recordings again into, into something new because it's like, there are like pretty insane samples to be found there. <laughs> that would I be love cool. the drop. I love the drop you, you put in there. It's like, I don't know. It's so dope. That would be really cool to have like a re a remix of just resampling re your own music and then release that as like a digital that'd be that'd be that'd be kind of cool <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that meta approach is is really interesting i think it's something that gives it so much gives the record so much texture and there's so many different there are so many different textures within every song <clears throat> and the vocals <clears throat> excuse me the vocals are another one and i know that the the um the woods collaboration seemed like it kind of came serendipitously but was there before you sent the song to Woods as you were kind of creating this stuff, this record, was it always your plan to have vocalists? Was there always your plan to have rappers? Like, did that come out of the Woods collaboration or was it, how did that, how did that come about? Yeah, no, no, that wasn't a plan. Uh, it was just in the flow, in the flow of things that happened and and then when when we were signed to Backwoods, it was very natural to invite and work with more more of the uh, artists related to Backwoods. And all of them are so insanely good writers. Uh, I mean, the lyrics they write is crazy. I mean, um, Cavalier came into the studio early in the day checked out what we were working on, got the vibe of what he was going to do. And then he went out and about in the city doing other stuff he had to do that day. Then he came back and during that whole day, he had that thing in his, what we were working on, he had that on his earphones. And then he was like, you know, writing a text. So that text is like this thing that he'd been, that was his day. Uh, and just seeing him work and lay his track, uh, the same with Masai, they were both in the studio. It was so effortless. Like, and, uh, Where were they located? Which studio was this? Willie Green. Oh, and Willie Green's. Okay. Yeah. yeah the greenhouse. Yeah. That's a, it's a beautiful spot to record. Um, it's a great spot. It really yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Sorry. Um, did having a vocalist come in, change anything about what, what y'all were doing in the moment? Did it, did it like rearrange the... Or after the fact uh, as well. I think what was kind of cool, at least from my perspective, is um, the day that Cav was in the studio with us, he came into the room with us. We're in one live room. He came into the room with us, took the jacket off, took kicked the shoes off, and just kicked it with us and just absorbed. Like he just was part, he was just, he wanted to be 
part of whatever was going to be created in that moment. And Cadence, the song he's on, developed the groove for that, developed in that moment at that time. And he was part of that process. And when he went, came back, it was already in the flow, which is only to say that I think he really, I think he really wanted to just like observe and be in the space while we kind of figured out musically what we wanted it to feel like. And as soon as he, as soon as he caught on to that and started to feel that himself, that's when it took off. And in the production process, we did so much, we made so many of those decisions about where to chop stuff and where to, in the moment with him in the studio, with Willie Green, with Petter, with Meta, everyone was there. Um, and I think we were kind of trying to figure out how to lay a foundation for him that also um, was super interactive where there's like interspersed, like chop mm-hmm. out moments and, and, you know, improvisational moments from all of us throughout the whole thing. And that's kind of always been, always been the goal. And I think it's also something that's like really made possible by the fact that Petter and Val have a long, long history of combining these elements. This is like work that they've been doing forever, you know, and it's like something that's interesting to all of us. So to just hop into their flow, everyone's flow is so collaborative. It's it's actually pretty easy to shape everything. And it doesn't feel like a betrayal of like, um, you know, some original idea or something. Mm-hmm. It just feels like an extension of of what's possible for us. Yeah, that that that's such a beautiful way that you guys describe that situation because I love there's a there's a specific synergy with all of these lyricists, but specifically the Cav one, which I would have to say is probably my favorite moment from a vocalist on this record. The way he comes in, it's like you guys set the like royal carpet for him. Like that was just like the most like <laughs> insanely like the way he comes in is almost surprising when I first heard it because I just didn't expect to hear anything like that at that very moment on cadence and it's just unbelievable the presence it's like he's it's one of the best verses i've ever heard in rap period like it's just unbelievable and i I think generally it's really impressive as you described where you guys are clearly finding little moments to like pop in sounds make it interactive but there's still so much space for the vocalists at the same time to where they don't sound buried and that's such a difficult line to to balance and i think you guys did that throughout it where the album can feel sometimes like very organized chaos but it still like ended up being very clear the vocalists added to it they weren't submerged in it in a way that was detrimental it was just really impressive kind of how you found that space for the vocalists and um you know when i think about the the fact that this is mostly instrumental but there's obviously a lot of like cohesion in the music there are lyricists adding their own kind of like explicit lyrical content to the fold what would you say were like the core messages or feelings that you wanted to 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 share with the listener as they experienced uh i think um i think for me just expanding um the ideas of possibility for listeners is definitely something to you know to work towards um i think most i think for us we i i would say for myself like i often i think within jazz or like creative music you often expect your audience to be kind of people you're already used to engaging with people who are sort of already in the scenes because it's pretty niche they're like already listeners of that style and I think with this project it's actually reached a lot of people who um, kind of via backwoods and via some of the collaborations and also people that we may not have even known were checking for us like it's kind of expanded the audience and expanded the listenership and I feel like offering something to people that kind of breaks open whatever their ideas may have been about what, what belongs with what is exciting. 
it's an exciting possibility. It's something to strive for. And also making something that's positive and powerful and contemplative in a time such as this, I think is also feels good to try and put that, put that out into the world. I, I really do think this is something that you achieved like a hundred percent. Cause I, I jazz and all of the influences you're pulling have been merged with hip hop, obviously throughout the beginning of the existence of hip hop, but not this way, not this way at all. And it kind of actually is funny because it reminds me of a conversation we had last week with the past guest on the show who's really in the ambient rap lane where I feel like similarly, I feel like there's a kind of like the, there's no template and you guys are flipping it on its head where a lot of times in hip hop, when I do hear jazz, it's kind of like rap is the foundation and then jazz is kind of added to it, which can make great music, of course, but it really feels like you guys are taking your influences that, uh, and putting that first as the foundation. And then hip hop is being added as this additional piece that gets kind of weaved in really skillfully and it makes something completely different. And I just, I, I'm, I can't say enough about how impressed I am with the combination of sounds. And if we look now in the future, I have a question from a patron here of the show, Ryan, AKA the levitator who asks mm -hmm. if there will be another album from Uxe coming in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah there will be um we have uh we're working on a tour for uh 25 and maybe some one-offs before that possibly possibly something in new york um and also to start working on a new album early 25 yeah I mean, we're always like, like Meta and, and Peter said before, it's like every time we get together, which is several times a year, somehow, some way, you know, Meta finds a way to bring us together, which is amazing. And each time we do that, we're in the studio. Yeah. I mean, we're like, we're like low key, even more of a recording band than, than we've been a live band. But in these tours that we did over the summer, the energy and the, the feedback that we got from audiences throughout Europe was so insane. Um, really? And I mean, a highlight for me was this show we did in Antwerp where um, it was very punk. We're like playing outside. There's hella people. They're all, they're all meant to put them on the stage with us. We're all, you know, interspersed. And, yeah. and in the live show, there's a lot of shredding happening um it's all of this and then there's a lot of shredding <laughs> happening because we all we love it we love it we there's many many dynamic moments moments of, of complete calm and swirl and very quiet moments but there's a lot of shredding and um and in that show people were so like engaged they were just like uh, throwing each other around and it was it was beautiful and i think you know, in the future, we're definitely trying to harness some of that energy we've been able to create in the studio and energy we've been able to create live now that we've been touring, touring the repertoire more and, and kind of offer that hopefully in the future. So you're, you're all such accomplished musicians as solo artists. I'm just very, I would love to hear what each of you have coming up solo. I know there was, I, I caught on the Backwoods Instagram story that Meta was recording at Steel Tip Dove's studio for perhaps a Billy Woods thing, but I do want to hear just like what each of you are doing solo before you get back into the world of Oxy. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was in the studio uh, a few days ago recording some stuff for Billy Woods, uh, and I will be doing some stuff with the Lucid on Saturday in the studio, uh, like laying down some saxophone tracks um i guess i can't elaborate on what it's going to be or where it's going to go um but um for me right now i released um on otherly love otherly love we were, uh, record records we just released a album with uh, craig Tabor and Chess smith uh it's coming out on october 4th uh, we're touring that record now. Actually, later today, I'm going to New Haven. 
Uh, we were playing at Firehouse 12, and we played at the Stone in New York um, last Saturday. And so, yeah, that's a record to keep an eye out for. I was just in the studio with a really good friend, a mutual friend of mine and Mette's, uh, Sophia Jamberg. Uh, for a uh, for yeah for a new um, I have an outfit called Post Coma, formerly known as Coma Saxo, uh, and that's like uh, Sophia is an integral. Sophia Jernberg, amazing singer from Sweden. Amazing, uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. So I was just in the studio with her uh, recording a new album. So uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tinker with that for 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 the next month and. Uh, but it's not being released until next October, so so I'm just like planning planning ahead. So that's that's my most recent thing. But there's a bunch of stuff. I was just recording uh, when Savannah was in Berlin in in August. I uh, I also recorded uh, her for my project drums project, which is a project where I feature a lot of drummers, and that's also more like a recording project, also kind of like infused with with all all the sample chop chopping techniques and all that stuff so really excited about that as well so that's another thing i'm i'm uh, working on at the moment yeah yeah um yeah i was gonna mention that actually um <laughs> it's it's always fun when we get together because we're like oh you know what we could also do while we're here um <laughs> but yeah i dropped a single this summer um it was an apple music exclusive but it's gonna come out um as part of the ep pack later this fall on so all the platforms um thank you um and then so that's from me but also coming out this fall is a album i'm really proud to be part of um, by a bassist in new york named orbetaket who's very really dope composer um it's a great record coming out called young and then also uh a project coming out with Christian McBride is a new newer project he's putting together. So that there'll be a release from that as well with one of my compositions on it, which is exciting. And um, yeah, we're all, it's hard to get us together because we all, you know, moving yeah. around busy and, and, and doing things, but it's such a treat. And the, the most fun thing is when we run into each other on the road, when it's not our project, which happens yeah. a lot, it happens a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. We like run into each other at the festivals, hanging out. Just, I think the beautiful thing about this project is that there's so many other fertile things that are happening in our lives musically that it's like, when we come together, we have really fresh energy to offer each other and, and that yeah. is always inspiring. It feels really good. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys are really pushing music forward in such interesting ways. And I'm really happy happy to hear all the solo work, hearing you guys as a group. Just, um, yeah. I'm really happy Thanks. you partnered with Backwoods to get this to as many people as possible because people need to hear this. I think everything about your North Star, about expanding people's previous con con conceived notions of music and what it should sound like i think you achieved it and just yeah the musicianship is incredible so thank you so much for coming on the show and your openness your kindness like this was a, a fantastic conversation thank you rohana thank you dash also thank you for for doing these podcasts i mean it's uh it's uh, such a important part of our culture to document things so yeah absolutely yeah, thank you so much So there we have it, another episode of the Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV. I hope this episode gave you some new perspectives and insights into what the greatest art form known to man in hip hop music has to offer. If you want to support the show in the most meaningful way possible, it would be my absolute honor to have you as a patron in the new Rap Music Plug podcast Patreon. Through this Patreon, you will be getting exclusive content such as bonus episodes, exclusive album recommendations, exclusive playlists, early access to episodes, and more. And above all though, you will be able to support the show directly in a way that will not only justify the crazy amount of time I spend on this show already, but allow me to cover some of the expenses related to supporting all of these great artists that we cover on the show 
through the website and will allow us to sustain and build on this amazing growth that the RMPP has experienced recently. So if you have any questions about any of the Patreon stuff or just want to keep tabs on the show, interact with me on rap music and all the great stuff that we can talk about, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at rapmusicplugpod or shoot me an email at qlctv.podcast at gmail.com. You can also rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and subscribe on YouTube and Spotify as well. But that's enough self-promotion for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace. Peace.